Hi everyone, so in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to draw an owl in graphite. Now the first thing that I did with this portrait is I completed the background. Now for this I am using my soft tool and this is the oval shape. It is my favourite out of all of the ones that they do because it doesn't create any harsh start and stop points. I do find the triangular one, not only does the sponge come off very easily, but it can have those lines in the background, which when you're going for a soft outer focus look like I am here, that's not what we want and we do want to avoid that. So either the oval or the round shape are my go-to. So with this background, because I wanted it to be out of focus, I am using my graphite powder and this soft tool to apply my layers gradually. Now this is exactly how I approach any subject even when I'm working with my graphite pencils. The amount of layers and the layers that I use are key. There's no way that we can achieve this much depth if we only work with two or three layers. You'll see here that it's all about building up that depth and contrast as we go. Now what I'm doing here as well is I'm working around the highlights on the branch. I'm allowing the lighter colour of the paper to show through and building up my darks around it. For this type of effect with this element and the lighting, I felt that that created the best effect. Now one thing that I want to mention here is I've added some out of focus twigs around the owl's head which was in the background reference photo. But by the time I got to this level of the portrait here and this far on, I felt that didn't look right and it was actually going to be a bit distracting because they were so close to the animal's face. So what I'm going to be doing here is covering that over with my graphite powder. Now this is one of the reasons why I love working in this way because graphite is such a forgiving medium if we layer lightly. I am not going in with my darks first, I'm not using my pencils and jamming all of that graphite in the teeth of the paper which would make it much harder to remove. But because I'm working with my graphite powder first and layering up from there, the mistakes or things that you don't like can be very easily fixed or hidden. So before I move on to the owl, I would just like to say that if you are interested in the entire real-time tutorial of this tawny owl, then it is available on my Patreon now. You get the reference photo, line art and full material list. It's a perfect one to follow along to. Now because I've uploaded it with a voiceover while I'm drawing, there are no parts sped up, there are no sections left out. Every single part is covered thoroughly. So if this or any of my other in-depth tutorials are of interest, I will link my Patreon in the description below. And if the tips and techniques that I've shared so far have been useful, I would really appreciate it if you could give the video a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference. So when it comes to the subject, now regardless of the animal that I'm drawing, I will always start off with the eye first. This is where the emotion and expression stems from, so if we get this wrong, it's very obvious and the portrait just does not have the same impact. So once I got the eye in and I was happy with that, I start to build up the feather texture around the eye. Now, feathers are very, they vary from bird to bird, so an owl would have very different feathers to a robin. So this is something which we need to take into consideration when we do start building up our layers. So I chose this reference photo for a couple of reasons. One, the lighting on the owl is beautiful and it really is eye-catching. But the other is because this owl had quite a few various feather textures. So the feathers on the face here are significantly softer and fluffier looking than the ones on the wing. So I wanted to make sure that I had a reference photo where I could aim this at a bit more of a beginner lesson. It's not overly complex compared to some feathers or some bird photos that I could have chosen. And I wanted to make sure that I had that step-by-step -step layering process showing the different feather textures and how we would approach that. Now because of that, the way that I work with the pencils, the way that I'm using any erasers and blending and softening techniques are going to vary depending on the texture that I need to create. This is not just for feathers, this is also the case when I'm working with fur. The way that I would approach a border terrier with a wiry coarse coat compared to a German Shepherd with that longer softer fur would be polar opposites. So how we would layer that is going to be very subjective to that reference photo. So as I mentioned, because this is recorded with a voiceover while I was working, I was able to explain every single decision that I made. 
So things down to how fine the point should be, how much pressure should be applied to the pencil, whereabouts we should be holding that pencil in order to get the sort of technique and texture that we're going for. All of these things come into consideration. And this is why I do like uploading my tutorials with a voiceover while I'm working so that I can make it as, um, as in-depth and as step-by-step -step as I possibly can. Because sometimes in the drawing process, there is a split decision that we make at the time based on that reference photo that we've got in front of us. And I do find sometimes with voiceovers that are added separately, those little things that we do in that moment can be lost or forgotten. So with this voiceover while I'm working, it really is a perfect one to start off with. If you're new to graphite and you'd like to start getting into fur or feathers drawing animals, the tutorials that I've got on Patreon would be really well suited. There is something for everyone and I'm building my content library up. So I've got a range of domestic pets, dogs, cats and horses and my wildlife subjects as well. Every month I'm going to switch from uploading a domestic pet and then the following month it will be a wildlife and so on. So that every single tutorial I upload they will be covering a range of topics. Now when it comes to drawing feathers, I will always break this up into small chunks. I personally think that feathers are one of the more complex elements to draw because of how they overlap at so many different stages. So with this, I always find the best way of approaching something like this is to work on small sections and then strip it back layer by layer. I'm only focusing on the feathers that I can see closest to the skin first and then I start working on the feathers that I think are sitting on top. Now when I work like this, I am definitely so much more effective with how I work and I spend less time hesitating thinking which bit should I be working on. So if you do find that you also struggle with that and there are many times where you feel a little bit deflated, work on a smaller section, you'll find that it's far less overwhelming. Now the one thing that I talk about in every single tutorial is the importance of fur or feather direction, the thickness and the length. Now that does come into play when we work with fur, it follows the structure of the skin, the skeletal system underneath, but this is exactly the same when drawing birds as well. The way that we're going to be able to get this wing here looking like it's just resting on the back of the owl is all in how the feathers are travelling. You can see that they are naturally slightly curved, there are no straight lines. This is again really something that we should be paying close attention to in that reference photo. Now the feather thickness in terms of the lines that we are drawing is dictated by a couple of things. Because graphite lead is quite a bit firmer compared to pastel pencils for example, that there requires a slightly different approach when working with the lead. The thicker or the more blunt that lead is, the thicker the line is going to be. But also, the more pressure you apply to that pencil, the thicker the line will be. So those two things do come into consideration and which is why I mentioned earlier that the length of the point of that pencil when working with graphite is so important. But another thing to point out there though is that doesn't mean that we need to be working with really sharp pencils. I find that when you work that way you can actually sometimes indent the paper, especially if you're working with the harder H pencils. So something like anywhere up to the 9H from possibly 4H to 9H, you have a real tendency to actually damage the paper if you apply too much pressure. Now obviously this will significantly limit the effect and the layers that we can apply on top if we have flattened the tooth of the paper by applying too much pressure. So that is something to be aware of throughout the entire drawing process. Throughout this entire drawing process and with any portrait that I'm working on, regardless of the medium, the contrast is what I want to be focusing on and getting that right. Now what I mean by that is it's our values. So the shadows need to be dark and the highlights need to be bright. In order to have that nice variation between the two, we're going to make that animal look more three dimensional. If the dark or the shadowed areas are more of a mid grey and we don't go dark enough, we're going to end up with a flatter looking portrait. So it's really important to make sure that the contrast is always in the forefront of our mind and that we're always trying to get that accurate. So this section here of the feathers, it shows perfectly what I've just mentioned about the length of those pencil strokes. I'm able to create a different looking feather texture here because I'm significantly lengthening my pencil strokes in this area. This has now made the section of feather here look far, like more puffed up, more fluffier. 
Now I don't want to go with super fluffy and end up with like dog fur or anything like that. I do still want this to look like feathers of course, but there is about that, it's all about having that variation, knowing at what point we need to lengthen the pencil strokes, ease off the pressure or apply more pressure to that pencil, depending on the type of texture that we are trying to create. Now when it came to the feet, this is something with any animal or a person, hands, anything like that, they do look very odd until you've got the bulk of the details in. Now something that I always say in my Patreon tutorials is just trust the process. If you've got a section like the feet here and it looks very, very odd, just draw what you see. By the time you get to the end of those layers, it will look like that photograph as long as we are studying where the shadows and highlights should be in the places that, that are accurate. Now what I mean by that is you don't want to be adding highlights or shadows in places where they're not seen in the reference photo because then it won't look like a foot or whatever element it is that you are drawing. So the position of the highlights and shadows really does play a huge part just like with anything else it doesn't matter about the details if the shadows and highlights are not correct the actual animal is going to look very very different. Now it is always at the last stages where I go back and I take a step away from my painting or drawing and I'll think what do I need to tweak in my background or my subject to make my portrait better. Once I can then look at it and think, do you know what, there's nothing now that I need to change, that's when I will call it finished. And here is a photograph of my finished owl. I really do hope this tutorial was useful. If it was, as I say, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference. I'd be very, very grateful. Now I upload two to three videos to YouTube every week. So if you would like to get notified of that content, then hit that subscribe and the bell button. If my in-depth tutorials on Patreon, I offer a range of mediums. So there are pastels, acrylics and graphite tutorials there. If they are of interest, then my Patreon is linked in the description below. Now, if you've got any art related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below because I'm more than happy to help if I can. And this tutorial is probably going to be the last one for YouTube before Christmas. So I really do hope that you all have a wonderful Christmas and a great new year. And as always, thank you so much for watching.